Alright. First things first, let's discuss what devices you can use to edit your Insta360X3 recordings. Let's go to Insta360.com. Then click the burger menu, and go to support, then product support. Let's then click on the X3. Then FAQ. Now click on hardware. From the left pane, look for compatibility and click that. Then phone and app. From this page, you will see the minimum hardware requirement for cell phones. Android phones should be on Android 7 or up. That's Android Nougat. For iPhones, you should be running on iOS 11 or up. For the SoC, for Android, it should be Kirin 980 or up, Snapdragon 845 or up, or Exynos 9810 or up. Google's first Tensor chips are based on Exynos 2100, so they should be good. For Apple device, you should have Bionic A11 chip or up. So, if your phone does not meet these minimum requirements, then tough luck, you cannot edit your X3 footages from your phone. This is also one major consideration when buying an Insta360 X3. As a side note, I also want to create a video about using the Insta360 Studio desktop application. Unfortunately, when I check the minimum PC requirements for the app, which you check by going to the downloads, then click on X3. And then scroll down to the Insta360 Studio, and click on Studio Tutorial. Below this page, you see the minimum requirements to run the Studio app. I'm okay with the OS since I'm running my ZenBook 13 OLED on Windows 11. The processor is also good with Ryzen 7 5700U. But, I only have 8 gigs of RAM on my laptop. Main hard disk is also good with 512 gigs SSD. But I again fail on the last item here, since I only have a built-in Radeon graphics. Of course, I still did try to use the Studio app, but it's lagging pretty hard. It's usable, but you will need to take tons of patience with you, since everything is running really slow. So, it looks like I can only do a video for the phone reframing, and not for the Insta360 Studio desktop app. Okay. Before we can edit anything, we will need to connect our phone to the X3 first. Turn on the X3, and from your phone, open the Insta360 app, which you can get from Play Store or App Store for free. From the Insta360 phone app, you should go to Album. If you are connected to the X3, you should see all the footages and pictures here. I can only see the ones I downloaded, so we need to tap the camera with Wi-Fi icon here at the top to connect to the X3. If it doesn't connect automatically, tap the X3 device from the list and wait for it to connect to the Insta360 X3's private Wi-Fi network. Okay. As you can see, the album now shows all the footages and pictures from the X3, which means our phone and the X3 are now connected to each other. We can press the power button of the X3 once to make it sleep, to save battery life. And we can now start editing from the phone. To start editing, just select the video or picture that you want to edit. And you will be taken to this preview, slash editing mode. At the top you will see three options here on how you can edit. Either auto, snap or edit, which is the manual editing. Let me lower the brightness of my Galaxy Z Flip 4 here, as the whites are shining like the angels from heaven are coming to get me. There we go. Much better in the eyes. As I was saying, we have auto, snap and edit options here. For auto, as the name implies, this is an automatic editing. The Insta360 AI will kick in, determine what are the interesting points from the video, and then create its own edited video automatically. This is a great option if you are in a hurry, but you have zero control on the output here. The next option is Snap, which lets you edit the video using your phone's gyroscope. The idea is to move your phone freely, as if you are taking the video in that instant, where moving the phone also moves the scene from the video. First option here is to press and hold the circle here. Then you can freely move your phone to also move the angle where you want the video to look or focus on, or what scene or angle you want to show in the video. Just release when done. There we go. We already created a 5 second snap there, shown in the icon. You can also swipe the timeline here below to set where you want to start. Let's say I want to go back to the first part. The second option to snap edit is to just tap the circle icon, which will play the video, and you can then freely move your phone, as if you are just taking this video now. Facing it to whatever angle you want the video to show. And when you're done, just tap the red stop icon. And we created another snap video there. Let's try to play that last snap that we created. There we go. As you can see, all the movements that I did in the snap editing earlier are all captured in the video. Snap is a really easy way to edit the video, but it takes time since you need to play the video as it is when editing, and you also don't have other editing options like for speed, rotation, tiny planets and such. You're just limited to changing the angle and focal view of the shots for this snap editing style. So if you want to bring out your creativeness, I highly recommend to use the edit option here, or the manual editing. But let me switch to the phone screen recording for a better view. Alright. As briefly mentioned earlier, you can tap to the video itself to play or pause it. You can also swipe right or left in the timeline below to seek or fast forward the video. Our first option here at the trim. 
As with any video editor, you can trim the video by dragging the front or back edge of the video to the point where you want the video to start or end. You can see the time here at the top right side of the timeline as a reference. We also have an option here for jump cut, which is a way to cut parts of the video that is in the middle of the video. When you are good with all the trimming you did, just tap the check icon to apply the changes. There we go, we now have our trimmed video. By the way, editing here is not a destructive edit. The original video remains intact. Only the edit information are saved here, the original footage is untouched. Next option here is the aspect ratio. You can select between a portrait 9 by 16, which fits social media posts, a landscape 16 by 9 ratio, which is perfect for YouTube, a square 1 by 1 ratio for Instagram or Twitter, and this weird 235 by 1 ratio, which is a really wide size and might be something of a cinema ratio or something. We can also add music to the video. And just a note, when we are connected to the X3's Wi-Fi, we have no internet, so make sure that your mobile data is turned on to be able to see and download the music options here. You have a list of free non-copyrighted music here that you can download and use for your video. You can also extract a music from any of your local videos. And you can also use a music file from your phone's local storage. The app basically gives you all the options to add music to your video. Aside from the music, we can also adjust the volume of the video. From lowering it down to mute or to full volume, depending on what you want. Then we can also adjust the video speed. We have two options here. The first one is to apply the speed that you selected to the whole video. You just need to select the speed from the slider here above the timeline. And it will be applied immediately. Or you can select the section speed option. And from here, you can speed up or slow down only parts of the video. Just tap the yellow icon in the timeline. Then scroll it to the parts of the videos that you want to speed up. Then tap again to indicate the end part to apply the speed to. As usual, just tap the check icon to apply the changes. Next is the multi-view option. This is basically a picture-in-picture, -picture, or PIP option. Just tap the plus icon at the top of the timeline, then select that area of the video where you want the multi-view to be applied. The area selected will have a small video overlay at the top right corner, which basically shows a Mii mode video, tracking the person holding the invisible stick. A pretty neat and effortless way to create a two-way view vlog. Next option is the freeze, which freezes a frame from the video and highlights that frame by doing a 360 angle round view or whatever angle you want the frame to move to. Just tap the set start view button to select the frame. Then select the frame where you want to end and tap set end view. That's it. There's the freeze frame. Goes around to the angle I selected and then goes back to the normal playback. It's a great way to highlight something or maybe do a creative shot like freezing items that you throw in the camera or something. Snapshot is basically just saving the current frame of the video as a picture, which you can save as either a 360 degree image or a flat image. And face filter is something that adjusts the faces it detects within the video, which is something common in most cell phones now. You have many of the face enhancements options here to play around. Then we have the filters. I don't think I need to go into details on this anymore as everyone is already familiar with filters. You have tons of filter options here, and they are even grouped here. So many groups and so many filters on each group. Adjust section is where you adjust the video's exposure, colors, contrast, saturation, highlights, shadows, tone, and sharpness. You have a full set of arsenal here to adjust your video to whichever updates you want to do with your video. Personally, I usually adjust the contrast and saturation of most of my videos here, as it is really easy and a user-friendly interface. Mark is used to mark important moments in your shots and make editing easier, since you can find and go back to that point easier. Reset edits deletes all the edits you did for the video and brings back the video to its original state. It's like a fresh start for new edit, which I usually do after I have exported my current edit. Delete will delete the whole video itself. Well download, downloads the whole video to your phone. If you have a less powerful cell phone, it is a good idea to download the video first, then do the editing on that downloaded video, which makes everything a lot faster. Let me do a reset edits here now. There we go. We are now back to the original state of the video. Alright. If you are editing a video, a keyframe is one the most important thing to learn. Keyframing is basically defining a start and end point for the video, and the video will gradually adjust itself from the starting point, doing everything in between automatically to reach the defined end keyframe point. To add a keyframe in the Insta360 app, you just need to tap the yellow circle plus sign here in the timeline. And the app will give you a lot of keyframe options here. At the top, you have the frame options like the tiny planet, which when you swipe down could turn into an inverted tiny planet. You also have an option here for ultra-wide, wide, and the linear option which removes the curved edges of the video, making it look like a normal footage. We can also do a viewfinder here, which is the same concept as the snap editing. 
We have a deep tracking option here as well, where you will select a subject from the video, then do a start tracking, and the app will automatically track that subject you selected, making it always be in the center of the footage. Here's a sample of that. To delete the deep tracking, just tap the section, then tap the tiny trash can icon at the top of the box section. We also have an option to rotate the video here. Let's do the rotation on our second keyframe. Let's swipe to another area of the video, then tap the yellow plus icon to add another keyframe. Now let's do a rotate. You'll have a slider here to select the degree of the rotation. Let's do a full 360 degree rotation here. As I've explained earlier, from the first keyframe, it will move the video to meet the end point in the next keyframe. Just like what you are seeing here. There you go. A 360 barrel roll effect. The last option here in the right is a snapshot, which I already explained earlier. So that's the whole idea here of manual editing. Just move, adjust, rotate, resize, pan, or change angle using keyframes. That's why it is called reframing in the first place. Just add keyframes on certain points of the video, then reframe the video base on the angle you want it to look. In case you tap the add keyframe first before you reframe the video, that reframed angle is not saved yet until you tap the update keyframe. So make sure that you always tap the update keyframe icon above every time that it is enabled. Let's do a tiny planet keyframe here near the end. Then let's do a linear frame here facing the sunset and building at the end. And make sure that you always tap the update keyframe to save the current frame you set for this keyframe. Let's say I only want to edit up to this point, which is 30 seconds. So let's trim the video to end at around 30 second. Check. And I'm done editing. You can preview your work here, and when you are satisfied, you can export. Just tap the export button from the top right corner. You have two options here, for flat or 360 video. For flat, the default option here is for auto, which I do not recommend, since it is usually set to a low quality video by default. So I suggest that you tap the custom, and then set the resolution you want, which is between 720p up to 4K. I usually select 4K here, but for the sake of the demo, let's go with 1080p. Frame rate is locked at 30. And for the bitrate, I usually select 100, which produces a really crisp video, but also takes significant amount of storage space. Let's go to around 50 for this demo. Then tap export. The export speed will depend on the complexity of the edits done, the length of the video, and the quality chosen. This 30 second, 1080p, 52 bit rate, 30 fps video took 32 seconds to export. The video will be saved to your phone's gallery location. You can open the device album to view it. And there we go. The fruit of our labor. Now that you are equipped with the knowledge of how easy it is to edit a video using the Insta360 app from your phone, only your imagination and creativeness is the limit on what you can produce with this. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobat Air.